I get asked a lot of questions about my piercings, so I decided to put together a short series of videos just to explain everything that people ask me. And in this week's video, I'm going to be talking about healing, pain, and just generally aftercare for a new piercing, such as rejection and migration. Before I start, I just wanna let you know that I am not an expert. I am not a professional piercer. This is only my personal experience from all of the piercings that I've had. I think the total amount is something like 67 piercings that I've had, but I currently have 54 piercings. Cleaning a new piercing is different depending on what sort of piercing you've gotten done. But the number one thing is do not clean a new piercing with soap. Soap has so much bacteria and it's basically putting salt on a fresh wound. It is going to hurt like hell and it is more than likely going to make the piercing infected. Most piercing places, depending on where you go, they will either give you a spray that will say, it's more for when you get cartilage piercings or ear piercings, they'll give you a spray disinfectant, or they will give you advice on what to get and how to clean it. What I use is sea salt, and that is the best thing to clean a new piercing. You can get sea salt from most grocery stores. You can also buy a disinfectant spray. I got this one at the pharmacy. You can get so many different sorts. You can also use hydrogen peroxide, but don't use that unless the piercing is infected or it is having a lot of trouble healing because hydrogen peroxide is a very intense form of cleaning a piercing. And if it's healing okay, it will just damage it and it will make it hurt a lot. If a piercing is being rejected, there is a big difference between rejection and infection. If a piercing is being rejected, it will usually be a very, very dark red to a purple color, but certain piercings such as the industrial piercing will take a long time to heal. The difference between infection and rejection is that rejection cannot be fixed. Rejection is going to happen and there is nothing you can do to fix it after it's happened. But with infection, infection can be fixed. But if you're cleaning your piercing properly, it should not get infected. But if it does, it can be fixed. But if it starts to migrate out, don't freak out unless around the piercing is a very, very dark red color, then it's rejecting. That is mainly with surface piercings because with cartilage piercings, they don't tend to migrate as much, but with a cartilage piercing that's rejecting, it will not heal. No matter what you do, it just will not heal. And generally that bubble will start to get bigger, it'll start to be more painful, and it will start to go over the actual jewelry. For things such as a belly button piercing, it will stay red for quite a while, but if it stays red for a long time, or if it starts to get really red, or you can see the actual jewelry coming through the skin, it's rejecting. And I can tell you this, that no matter what you do, there is no way to prevent a piercing from being rejected and there is no way to stop it from rejecting. There is absolutely no way that you can save it. You have to take it out. It is just gonna minimize the scarring. Believe me, I know how much it sucks when you have to take out a piercing. I am always almost crying when I have to take out a piercing because it's rejecting or because it's infected. When I was 14, I got my belly button pierced and it slowly migrated out. Now, migration is very different to rejection. Migration will just be the jewelry slowly slipping out. It doesn't always come all the way out, but with rejection, it will push itself all the way out. But with my belly button piercing, it slowly migrated out where the skin just softened and it just came a little bit further forward. But it didn't help when I climbed over a barbed wire fence and I 
didn't rip it out but I came pretty close to and it hurt like hell. With ear piercings, there is one thing that I got asked by one of my subscribers and she noticed a bubble that was forming on her ear. And I know what this bubble is, but the thing is with a piercing or a cartilage piercing that is done with a needle compared to a cartilage piercing that is done with a gun, that bubble will form in different ways. So an industrial piercing, you will generally see the bubble forming. And if the bubble looks like this, it is completely normal. But if the bubble is getting ginormous and it is getting all purple and really dark dark red color it is infected with something to look for for infection if you've gotten a piercing such as a cartilage piercing if you have gotten that piercing say three weeks ago and you're still cleaning it and it hurts more than it did when it was freshly pierced it is very likely that it is infected. When a piercing is done with a gun, what happens is when the needle goes through the ear, it pushes through the skin. So it doesn't make room for it, it just pushes through. And because of how fast the needle goes through the cartilage, it can tear and damage the cartilage. So that bubble that you might see, if you've had a cartilage piercing done with a gun, that bubble is because the cartilage is damaged. But when a cartilage piercing is done with a needle, there is actually a small hole inside the needle. So when it goes through the ear, it's actually taking away part of the cartilage. So it's making room for the jewelry to go through rather than with a gun where it just pushes through. And when a piercing is done with a gun, it will take a lot longer to heal and generally it will have a higher rate of getting rejected. I've had cartilage piercings done with a gun and I have learned the hard way not to do that. One time I had a set of studs done in my ears with a gun and the next morning my ear had swollen over the jewelry and I don't even want to go through how painful that was to get the actual jewelry out because the skin around the cartilage had actually gone over the stud. When I had my industrial piercing, I actually had mine get slightly infected, but I went to the doctors and they gave me a script of antibiotics and that healed it up okay. But with the bubble, the bubble was there for about five months or so. Like I said, the bubble is normal, but with an industrial piercing compared to a normal cartilage piercing, the needle is a lot thicker. So what happens with the piercing gun, it forms the bubble because of the pressure and because of the damage to the cartilage and the skin tissue. But with an industrial piercing and how thick the needle is, when it goes through, it's sort of hard to describe. It just makes the ear very angry. My industrial piercing took about five months to heal. In January last year, this was when I still had my industrial pierced, but it wasn't fully healed. And I had to take all of my piercings out and replace them for plastic jewelry. And with the industrial piercing, I noticed that when I took it out and I put the plastic one in, when I put the industrial bar back in, my cartilage around the industrial piercing was healed. I don't know why that is and I don't know if it's to do with the plastic, I don't know. I don't know any of that. Like I said, I'm not an expert and this is all from experience. I hope that I've helped you in some way. In next week's video, I will be talking about, what am I gonna be talking about in next week's video? I don't know, let me know in the comments what you would like to see me talk about in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you next week.